the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. We're going to get right into the content, right? What's happening on the market. Now, we had some pretty interesting behavior. Now, going into the past few days, we've been looking and expecting more downside. Why? Because if we look at all the indexes that continue to make lower highs and we're seeing minimal volume to the upside pressure, this leads us to a bearish thesis. What's happened over the past few days, we've continued down. Now, before we get into where we're going and what's happening, I have to ask you to do two things, like and subscribe. Every single day I post these videos for you so you are prepared on the market and you know what to expect as far as news and everything in between. And as usual, it's always unbiased here on the channel. Also, I recommend if you're not following on Twitter, do so. The link is down below, okay? What did I say yesterday? On Twitter, I told you guys about a play that I liked. Right there, right before the market closed, told everyone I got spy puts for February 17th. Those were up almost 35% just in the beginning of the trading day. So I wanted to just highlight that. I try to give you guys as much free content as possible. If you want to make the next step and join Discord to actually start learning while this is happening also, that's what you need to be doing. If, if that's your goal to learn how to trade what we're doing all day, right now at the end of the market, you actually have over about 100 people sitting in that voice chat right now. This is every single day, and that's what we're doing. So let's get right into what's happening here on the market. So when we specifically look at NQ, I, I believe you're, you're trying to break this trend. Now, we went live earlier, and I tried to go live Monday through Friday around 11 a.m. Central, 1030 Central. If you look at what's happened, this was basically our low that we have kind of had established essentially uh, going back to the 30th, maybe even like the 29th. Okay, this has been where we tested. And this is the one hour chart. I want to just show you the significance of this level. We have one. We'll count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Going into today, this was our 10. So just nine, just excluding today of testing this level down here on NASDAQ. While this is happening, you had a test of supply, clearly rejected and pushed back down, and then making lower highs across the board with atrocious volume on the upside moves. Okay, this is tech. Going into ES, what's happening here with futures? We look here. This is where you had the most strength. I'm going to tell you right now. This was your biggest area of strength across the entire market. I'm going to tell you that. Um, and it's the easiest thing to see here. The two hour gives you the best viewpoint. Let's go to the two hour really quick so you can see. You are making higher lows and semi making higher highs. But coming in today, things changed. We got some data from we're going to look at here in a second. And then we also just had the reassurance from Fed minutes and everything in between, which is why I started grabbing puts on my positions, right? That's why we started leaning into those puts was because of the data and what was said from there, right? Now we're seeing a lower low being established and we're pushing down. I think you're going to test demand soon. Okay. If we look at the four hours, go to the one day really quick, the one day chart here. Where's our demand? It's actually here on the four hour. Sorry, right there. So you can see right down here. We have about as of right now, 60, 70 points of downside opportunity on yes. And I do think that will hit for instance. NQ has already invalidated that demand and you're actually below it right now. You're trying to push below it here at the end of the day. NQ, you're dangerously, very dangerously close to your 52 week lows already. NQ looks like it's going to break. As I mentioned yesterday, also, what did I say? The bear flag, boys, the bear flag, clear bear flag, trying to break down. It looks like it's getting that clear breakdown into the end of the day today. On top of that, there was more. Again, this I published all this on Twitter also. If you're not you know familiar okay what did we say here let's go back really quick so we can see we had the head the shoulder and the shoulder kind of extended a little bit more going back to twitter what did we say we published it yesterday 18 hours ago head and shoulders forming out clearly to the downside easy easy work here guys this is what we want to see and right now we're seeing it being established and sellers taking control right now. As far as volume on the day, this is where I just like to show you guys. It's the easiest way to show you volume. Yahoo Finance, good historical data. When you look at your stock specifically, let's look at SPY. Your 63 million, your 30 day average is around 78, 79 million. So you're still coming below your average. I do want to highlight that. But what I'm going to mention to you today. We had that immediate drop right before market open. 8.30, we opened up here. A lot of flat movement, right? If we really look at what happened here on ES and what happened on NQ, you open up 
at a bearish point, and then going forward, you just move sideways to the upside. So bulls all day have the opportunity to try to push you back up, but you can see they did not show up. If you really go look at a spy chart on the one minute and identify that volume that's being established there, it's even more clear, but I just ha don't have the time to do all that right now. I'm mean, gonna have to kind of speed through this video today. Going a little bit more in depth, VIX. I wanna talk about this. I think VIX is one of the biggest indicators right now. I think it's something that we have to be watching. I think VIX is begging to shoot off. I think we're going to get fireworks extremely soon here on VIX, and I think you gotta be prepared here. I think VIX has room to soar. Basically, every move that we've had on the past year, past 12 months, from this level of 19, we've had to push all the way back to 34 on VIX. You're only at 22, people. I'm telling you, 30 is even a low ball, okay? And conservative. I definitely think VIX has room to start moving and start going towards that upside movement. Next up, I do want to talk about what's happening here with the yield inversion. Again, we talked about this yesterday. We said we were starting to break below it. It was a little concerning. I still believe the 10 years is going to start moving back towards 4%. Look what's happening here. The yield inversion. You broke below it for a second. Now you're pushing it back up, heading towards a full inversion. That 10 year is now tracking and trying to get back above that 30 year yield. That's a big, big no no sign for me. And that's still telling me there's a lot of weakness specifically here on the market. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at there on the big signals. Last up, DXY. I'm not super interested, but if we look here, you're at a massive level right now. We've been talking about you've held this level, the level below this is 1.9, 101.9, you're breaking up to the upside here, definitely helping the case what's going on. Now, it's important to know with the news that happened today, you did have a little bit of news on the economic calendar as far as job claims. Did not help out the economy, not what the Fed really wants to see here. That's number one. Two, look, your jobless claims, unemployment going. Look, it's lower than expected. We don't want to see that. We need to see jobless claims go up, up, up. That's a giant red flag for me. Going into Bullard. What did he say today? He actually did say a few good things, right? But he ultimately said the one thing that the market doesn't want to hear, that you're not going to start cutting rates until 2024. He also said, you still got to start raising rates further here. You're not done yet. So there's a few red flags there, a few causes for concern. But ultimately, I think this is a good viewpoint of what's to come over the next four months. Again, I see downside for the next at least two months. But after that, we might be able to start talking about potential bottom unless we start to see unemployment skyrocket with demand dropping rapidly. That's the worst case scenario. And what do we know right now from all this data that's been released? Demand is free falling right now. It's hurting across the board on all of our big tech companies. And we have earnings coming up over the next two weeks, which what do we think is going to happen there? We think those are going to flush and be a very big letdown. So I want to be very clear about that. Going back to the charts, I want to talk about a few things going forward. Now, few stocks I'm liking. Still right now, I'm going to tell you right now. Super, super quick. We're going to go to the four-hour time frame here. I'm going to tell you now. NVIDIA, favorite play. Favorite play right now. Clear bear flag here on the four-hour. You're trying to break down. You get below this. In my opinion, you have downside almost down to 131, 130. I, I think it's going to happen. You're already seeing weakness in that sector. You saw what's happening with China. There's a lot of bad stuff happening here. The NVIDIA clear downside opportunity. Apple. I didn't love it yesterday. I love it today. I think Apple's getting ready to, for more pain. You had your previous 52 week lows. You didn't even get a retest of that at 129. You almost got there. Didn't even get a rejection from that point. Couldn't even make it there. Now you're flipping back below 125.8. This is a lot of weakness. You're ending the day basically near those 52 week lows you've already established. This just screams pain, pain, pain for me from the rooftops. I hate Apple here. I think more downside will come. I'm going to tell you right now, my longer term viewpoint, my longer term, you know, next two month outlook on where I see uh, Apple going. You might not like it. You may disagree. You're probably going to give me a little bit of hate down below. But what did I say about Microsoft? What did we say about NVIDIA? What did we say about Home Depot? What did we say about Boeing, right? What do we say about the big ones we're liking, right? And I'm going to talk about Nike too. 116 is where I think we're going. After that, 103 is a possibility. Next up, Nike. This is more of a swing opportunity. I love it. It's one of those plays that I, I just absolutely love. Here on the daily chart, still in a clear, clear, clear supply, and you're losing it here in my opinion. This screams weakness to me also. I definitely think more downside is going to be coming. And I think right here, your risk to reward opportunity is beautiful. I think it's absolutely gorgeous right now. 
Why? Because right now, if you're getting into sh puts, and I haven't looked at those yet, I want, I'm probably going to start establishing those going into tomorrow if I can get that opportunity. I'm going to tell you what. Your stops are just right above supply. If it gets invalidated, get out of it. But the downside opportunity here is all the way back down to roughly 105, then possibly $98. This just screams opportunity. And what do we love to see here? We love to reduce risk at all costs while increasing the chance of making money or that reward opportunity. Our value is the name of the game, and that's where our focus has to be. And right now, I believe Nike is just one of those risk reward opportunities that is screaming for me. And I think it's about time to really start getting serious about Microsoft. Next up, last one I'm going to mention is going to be Amazon. Again, today's video a lot shorter than usual. Looking at Amazon, probably one of the worst charts ever. What I will say, and I know everyone here is in the comments, say, Tyler, 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 you're in a descending wedge. And maybe you are. Maybe it's possible, right? It's You kind of have to force it. But maybe, maybe you are. Okay. In my opinion, this is one of the weakest stocks in the market right now. Hands down. I don't know how you can look at any other stock and say it's weaker than Amazon. Amazon, if we come back to you around the weekly income look, this is a major level at 80.74. You're going to get a test of that level. I would be willing to to bet up quite a bit of money. Push it up right there, roughly 81.31, sorry. That's where I'd be looking, also the top from this range here. So basically 81.31 all the way down to like 80.9 is where I'd be targeting. I still think there's more downside below this. Uh, I'm gonna tell you now. Amazon's earnings are going to be a massive concern. I think they're going to miss. If I look at any earnings across the board, the only earnings I think that could really beat is going to be like Netflix. I think that's it. I don't really know who else could and is going to beat. I think it's this is going to be one of the worst earnings seasons that we've had in a long, long time. I'm actually going to bless you guys with one more. We're going to look at Caterpillar. Caterpillar has my interest, and I know a lot of you guys are talking about it. If we look at Caterpillar, you have to go to the daily time frame. You have to get a big zoom out. You have to identify where you're at. And really, this should be a little bit high. I think I was looking at the weekly uh, supply zone. But if you come up, it's about right here. And you come into this level. This is a clear-cut supply. The dangers here. Now, a lot of people keep asking me about Dow. Now, Cajun and Discord, if you know Cajun, we all love him. He's big short on Dow. I'm going to say this, though, right now. I think there's pain opportunity on Dow. But I think the riskiest assets right now to short are going to be Dow stocks. And not from the point of losing money as far as risk. I'm just saying I'm missing on an opportunity. I think that tech and the big names, Netflix, and consumer discretionary, Amazon, Target, Costco. I think a lot of these names out there, they all have a lot of pain opportunity. But I believe that something like Cat, it has a lot of opportunity to the downside. But it's just continued to prove itself and move so strong. Similar to something like Boeing been a tank it's been a beast right remember we called this one out we loved it right we called it down here at 172 204 now so we love what's happening here but this is that's that one area that you're betting against a strong area in the market so with these stocks in dow i've just been staying away now those easily could drop and i really hope you guys make money if it drops i i, I want you guys to succeed but i have to stay away from areas in the market that don't favor my side of the trade and i and I, that's just my personal opinion here now, easily those could drop. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to keep saying that. I believe there's a lot of downside opportunity, but it's just not worth it for me right now. That's going to wrap the video up. If you got anything out of this, please like, subscribe, do what you got to do. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.